Obviously, there are pretty big issues right now at Florida State that the Seminoles and Mike Norvell ultimately will need to figure out how to solve. Uh, I watched a video this week from Josh Pate, who, again, I know you guys always get on me when we do a Pate video, but he's making some sense. Not only his take on the war chant stuff, which I'm sure you guys have seen and heard and complained about, uh, but it's just his take on Portal High School, what that mix looks like, what that... Um, balance is at Florida State, where some of the issues are at Florida State. And I think he got a lot of things right in that. And I know you guys are still mad at him for the snub, but I I don't want to say I moved on from the snub. I've moved on from mostly caring about what he said about the snub. And I think he makes an excellent point or two here. I think he missed on something that I do want to talk about later, but I think he makes some really good points. So we'll chapter this out. So if you have already watched Pay, you can kind of like look down at the bottom and fast forward and not have to watch it. It's about a two minute clip. If you've already watched it, skip ahead. I'll talk about it. If you haven't, check out what Pate had to say about the problems going on at Florida State. I, I want to tell you very quickly, I appreciate our friends over at Rapid SEO Host, GotSpears.com, and Survival Meds. I'll talk more about them later, but let's roll that Pate clip. Mike Norvell knows his coaching staff's probably not good enough, and there are upgrades that need to be made there, and I would agree with that. In general, I'd agree with that. But I also think he's probably looking around saying, I thought I had something on this team. I thought the DNA of this team was one thing, and it's not, and it's a problem that I wasn't aware of that. But it makes sense because these guys are not Florida State. These guys are somewhat Florida State, and then they're mercenaries who just kind of landed at Florida State, but they didn't buy Florida State. Like that's, that's the same thing that you're looking at with Texas right now. I have talked to some folks at Texas, and they portal guys in. Texas has been really good in the portal, but ultimately they don't want to talk about the portal at Texas. They don't want to talk about the portal at Bama. They don't want to talk about the portal at Georgia. They use it. They'd be dumb not to, but it's a supplement tool. They sell Texas. They sell Alabama. They sell Georgia. Ohio State sells Ohio State because the nucleus of your roster has to be made up of kids that out of high school, in some cases with bigger offers in the NIL market, chose you because you're a fit for them. They bought you. They bought the program, the vision you sold them. Not enough of Florida State is made up of that kind of player right now. I, Mike Norvell's not an idiot. Mike Norvell, I think, realizes that. The difference is I could go on a message board right now and I could just say that. Mike Norvell could realize the same thing, but the difference is it takes months and months and a couple of years to actually put that in practice. And even if you realize it, you've got to go land the kids. You, you've you got to have to compete against Miami and to compete against the other big programs in the South that you're going to recruit heads up against for athletes. It takes more than just being committed to recruiting against them because uh, there are a lot of programs that are committed that get their head beat in in recruiting. you got to be more than committed. you got to be really good at it. That's what we got to figure out. That's what we got to figure out. So his first point there about the coaching staff not being good enough. Look, I, I'm not necessarily here to take personal shots or attack certain coaches on this staff. You know, I don't even know that I need to say names, but we have done several videos and you can go back to December when we were upset about a bunch of different things and just complained and whined and moaned all month. Um, we, we thought that there were some changes that needed to happen on the staff. And then you can go back to January when the news started to come out from 247 and the different places that the staff was all being not only retained but extended. Um, we had some thoughts about that too. And I don't necessarily need to rehash that. If you're a new subscriber, you can just type in staff on our channel and you can find my thoughts on it, right? But my thoughts are probably very similar to yours. I, I thought that in those moments, Mike Norvell should have made some changes. And maybe that was hard to do after 13-0. and 0. Maybe that just isn't his MO. Maybe he thought, well, it worked over these last two years, and so we don't need to necessarily get better. Mike even sold the fact that staff retention was a good thing and that having that continuity was a good thing. I think there are aspects of it that you can look at and say, yeah, that's, that's really good, having that continuity. Um, but there are also aspects that say if you're an elite program, why is your staff not getting picked over? Why are they not coming after your staff members, right? And I think the answer would be how many of these staff members, on, on, how many of Florida State's coaches are coaches that people would want to poach? 
There's certainly a few. That's not to say that no one out there would be a, a, a staff member that uh, or a coach that other programs wouldn't like to have. Uh, I certainly think that Sertan is up there. I think Alex Atkins is is one that, whose name was tossed around some. I think that there are a few. There are a lot of coaches on the staff that I don't think are poachable. I, I don't think people would want to go after. And even Pate says he thinks Norvell is aware of this, thinks that he knows this. Now, again, maybe it was hard to make those changes last year, but the staff does need to be upgraded. And again, not necessarily here to fire anybody. My thoughts are probably the same as yours. You can go back to some old videos if, if you want to kind of see what, what I think or, or who, uh, who maybe we should upgrade, right? And, you know, it, you're in a business where you're making hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. You can handle a little uh, criticism from a guy who does a French fry podcast. So I, I don't really feel that bad about it, just kind of being honest. Uh, he talked about the nucleus of the team not being made up of enough guys who bought Florida State. I'll push back here a little bit. I don't necessarily know that I buy that. And and the implication here is, oh, you, you went and got guys from the portal who weren't all bought in on Florida State, who, who, who hadn't been here since high school, and so they weren't as bought in. I don't know that I buy that. I, I've spoken with Mike Norvell in person. He's told me to my face, hey, we look for the same kind of kid in the portal that we do in high school, kids that are going to buy into our culture, kids that are going to buy into the work, kids that are going to buy into what we want to do. And he said, I don't care if a kid is from high school or the portal, if they're the culture fit, if they're the talent fit, if they're the buy-in fit that we want. And um, so for Pate to say this, I, I wonder where was that complaint last year? Where was the complaint about guys not being bought in um, for a couple of years? You know, even even Keon, who just kind of came in and went, and, and that's fine. Keon wasn't described by Josh Pate as a mercenary. Uh, Braden Fisk wasn't described by Josh Pate as a mercenary. Uh, certainly the guys that have been here multiple years, the Jared Verses or or Trey Bensons or Johnny Wilsons, those guys weren't described as mercenaries. And so that's I think that's kind of convenient for Pate. I think that's kind of convenient to say, oh, well, they're not bought in because you didn't get them out of high school. Well, that ain't been the complaint for the last several years. Jermaine Johnson still buys in, and he's been in the NFL for how long? So I, I don't know that I buy that. I, that's where I'd push back. I don't think that's the problem with Florida State right now. Now, I'm okay with Pay having that opinion. For somebody that's got a 30,000-foot view of college football, I can see how you would think that'd be a problem. I don't think buy-in or culture or guys buying into Florida State is the issue. I will tell you what I think the issue is in just a second. Let me get to his third point, and then I'll talk about that. He said the recruiting has to get better. The high school recruiting has to get better. And he's spot on here, right? And 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 I am 100% on board with the way that Norvell uses the portal. I think that the portal is the reason we were able to go from three wins to five wins to 10 wins to 13 wins. Um, they certainly, as those things were going along, they were upgrading the high school recruiting too. His first year, they were in the 20s. His second year, they were around 19 or 20, I think. His third year, I think they were around the 15 number. And then last year, I think they were around 11, 12-ish, right? And so the recruiting has been incrementally increasing. It has been getting better. Is it good enough to compete for championships? Probably not. I think we can all agree with that. But it has been getting better. And so I think the thought was, well, you continue to kill it in the portal. You continue to incrementally increase your high school recruiting. And you're going to be a pretty good roster. You're going to be a pretty good team. I don't know. And I think what this year is proving to you is that you can't always construct the roster through the portal the way that you have. You can't always find the Jared versus. You can't always find the Keon Coleman's. I, I don't know that there was a Keon Coleman in the portal this year. I don't know. I, I know the, the kid that went to AM Scrow. I, I know there's some good pieces. There wasn't a Jared verse in the portal this year. There wasn't a Jermaine Johnson in the portal this year. And so it's not that Florida State didn't land him. It's just that that player didn't exist. The way that Florida State values recruiting and, and the way that they value recruiters has to change. The way that they, we, we talked about this, Mike Norvell is a development type guy. I get guys who buy into my culture, my system, and I will develop them into the player that I want them to be. And that's fine. It doesn't always work great, right? You, you, you consistently see teams at the top of the recruiting ranks winning championships. And so development's fine. I'd say that you're at a point now where most of your staff is development heavy. They're not very recruiting heavy. And that probably needs to change. The value of bringing in 
that top level talent needs to change. I've seen the articles just this week about NIL, how Miami spent X and Florida State spent X on their rosters. And guess what, guys? Those roster numbers, those NIL values are very similar. People want to blame the battles in or they want to say, oh, Florida State's poor. Now, Florida State's spending a lot of money on this roster, but it just wasn't constructed very well. And there's a lot of people that you could say, hey, point the finger at. That's not necessarily my my point here is to say, oh, this guy screwed this up or this guy screwed this up or they should have done this better. I'm just saying it needs to change. The way that they value recruiting, the way that they value winning out on those elite high school battles and the way they value recruiters, it's not just money. It's not just, hey, we have this much money, come play for us. You, you know, I know the assumption in today's day and age, maybe that's a good point, yeah. I know the assumption in today's day and age is that you just pay the most money and you get the players. No, everyone's paying a lot of money. Miami's paying a lot of money. Ohio State's paying a lot of money. Alabama's, everybody's paying a lot of money. Texas is paying a lot of money. You actually have to recruit the kids too. You actually have to develop relationships and you actually have to recruit them. And I don't know that this staff focuses on that enough. I don't know that there's an emphasis on that enough, right? We've got some great coaches. We've got some great people. I don't think anybody on the staff's a bad person. I just think there needs to be a bigger emphasis on recruiting. I've spoken with people that have said, you know, we would love to have been in that battle, but our staff didn't even really give us a chance to get into that NIL battle like we thought they would have. And so, yeah, the, the money stuff is there. It, it's got to be a focus on the recruiting. Um, the way that they pay or they offer NIL to prospects. We can't be cheap. We cannot be cheap. I've had several people tell me that this staff kind of lowballs kids. You've even had current commits say, hey, I could go somewhere else and make more money, but I chose to come to Florida State because they fit me. That's great when it goes your way. But if you're lowballing a kid and they're going somewhere else and then they're beating you on Saturdays, that's a problem. You have to be fair to these kids. You have to be fair to these high schoolers when you're trying to get them in. And, and offering NIL that is competitive is the way to do it. I'll tell you, the, the big problem is that in the 2023 class, after winning 10 games and, and we beat both rivals that year, we barely had a top 10 class. And now we were told, oh, it takes years to develop relationships. It takes time. 2024 will be better. And 2024 was looking better until you missed out on your top four prospects um, on signing day. And you fell from having a top five, six class down to 11, 12. The real issue that we have with this team, though, and what I said I pushed back on Pate, it, I don't think it's that they missed on guys that bought into Florida State. I, I think, I mean, DJ Uyungle, and you can you can hold all your jokes, you can say whatever you want about him. I'm not here to bash the kid. As poorly as he's played and as much as he struggled, he was begging to come to Florida State. He don't tell me he don't tell me that kid didn't buy in. That kid wanted to be here. Now. Should he be here? Should he be? I, you know, I don't know. I know we talked about who should start at quarterback. I don't know. But that, don't tell me that kid wasn't bought into Florida State. He absolutely was. He was so bought into Florida State that he said, I'll come in and, and you make your decision on Cam Ward, and then I'll wait for you. Once you green light me, I'm in. But I, I won't even take other visits until I know what you're doing. DJ Uyungle wanted to be here. All right? Don't, don't tell me that he didn't. Marvin Jones Jr., Earl Little, guy, you know, Jalen Brown, guys that they missed on in high school that they circled back on, they certainly wanted to be here. The big problem, though, is not that the, there wasn't buy-in from these guys. I think they wanted to be here. I think they saw 13-0. I think they saw the culture. I think they wanted to come play for Coach Norvell. The big problem is they just missed. At the end of the day, I don't know if it was evaluations. I don't know if it was just easier. It, it really felt like a lot of their... Um, targets this year were circle backs. They circled back on guys that they had missed in high school. You know, we mentioned Jalen Brown, Marvin Jones Jr., Earl Little, uh, others that they were very involved with on that front. Um, and I don't know. I, I'm not saying that all those guys are busts or nobody's any good. But I mean, you look at how many ha you know how many guys that we've taken haven't even taken a snap. Right? Sean Murphy's hurt. Uh, Rizzi hasn't played. Durajai hasn't played. Earl Little played very little. Um, Duke Cooper coming home hasn't played much at all. Um, there, you know, and then you look at the guys who have played. Jalen Brown's kind of been hit or miss. Roy Dell's been fine. Jalen Lucas has been fine. DJ not very good. Uh, Ferguson not very good. Um, uh, kid from kid from Florida has been pretty good. Uh, Richie Leonard he he's actually probably been your best transfer so far. Um, so you you've had mixed results there. The problem to me is not buy in. The problem is just that 
you didn't get as good of a portal class as maybe you thought you did. You didn't hit on the portal. And the problem is you were counting on the portal guys to be massive, massive contributors. You were counting on them to come in and ball out. Now, does it help that Destin Hill and, and Hakeem Williams are, are banged up? Hill for the year, Hakeem for the first couple of games? No, absolutely not. That makes you count on other guys at the wide receiver room. Does it help you that your quarterback play isn't as good as you thought it was? No, that doesn't help at all. Does it help you that the linebacker play has been pretty atrocious? No, that doesn't help you at all. But it's not like those things weren't possibilities. Like It's not like those weren't foreseen potential issues. They didn't go out and get an absolute number one bona fide certified stud in the portal at wide receiver. They also didn't get him in the high school ranks when they were going after Jeremiah Smith after thinking and being told that he was already committed to him. Um, they didn't recruit linebackers well enough over the last few years. We've talked about that at length, and now they have poor linebacker play. Like Nothing's really that shocking. And so they went to the portal again to try and save the roster, to try and get some impact players that could be really good this year. And I love some of the young talent that's here or there. I, I love some of the young talent, the running back room, the, the defensive backs room. I, I'm not saying that they're, you know, obviously I like the quarterbacks behind DJ, but they went to the portal. They tried to find guys. And so far through two games, right? I won't say that everybody's a bust. I won't say that they don't have time to make it better. But the problem is that they missed in the portal. They didn't get a Braden Fisk. They didn't get a Keon Coleman. They didn't get a Trey Benson. They didn't get a Jared Verse. They didn't get a Johnny Wilson. They didn't get a Dylan Gibbons. They didn't get, you know, so like, I, I don't, you know, it's not necessarily that the guys didn't buy in. It's just that the portal guys that you brought in, who have you been super impressed with that they brought in from the portal? They went and got Devontae Brown, started him for a game. That was not a great pickup. Jalen Lucas has been good. Roy Dell, Benson, fine. Brown, fine. Richie Leonard, fine. That's about it. Lolo Hay has been good. I will say that. Lolo Hay has been really good. MJJ, not super great. Um, and that's got to get better if they want to win games, right? And I don't know if it will. I, that, you know, That's on the coaches to try and figure out. But the problem is that they were going to the portal to rely on it again, and they struck out. Were they slow with offer? Like What, what happened in the portal to where they didn't end up with some of their original target? I don't know. I really don't know. You know, that, and you know, we'll probably never know, right? Like, that's not something Mike Norvell's going to open up. To, oh, well, we were slow to offer this guy, or we wouldn't pay this guy this, or whatever. But they're going to have to change the way that they evaluate that. Because when they hit, they hit really, really big. I don't know that they hit very big this year. I, I don't know that they... Ah, shoot. You tell me. Of all the guys we missed it, DJU, Roydell, Jalen Brown, Benson, Ferguson, Leonard, Murphy, uh, Jones Jr., Riley, Brown, Rizzi, Durajai, Lolo Hay, a little Lucas Cooper. Um, how many did they hit on? How many of those guys are, are hits, right? How many? And we're two games in, right? Big things could change. But so far, a sixth of the way through your season, if you think about it like that, how many of those seem like hits? I, I don't know. Not, I mean, there's more misses than there's hits, though, for sure. And hopefully that improves. Hopefully that gets better. But big picture, there has to be a refocus. There has to be a restructuring. You know, heard whispers that Mike's going to make staff changes. And I would love for that to be true. I've heard that for a couple of years now, and there really haven't been many. So we'll see. We'll see if that changes or not. Listen, if you made it through a video that's nearly 20 minutes, and listen, if you, uh, I'll give a quick shout out here, and then we'll wrap up and go. A quick shout out to Rapid SEO Host. If you have any kind of website business that you are uh, working with, if you own a website, if you own a business, make sure you hit them up. They got a one month free hosting that you can get right now with the link in my description. Survival Meds, I appreciate them a ton. If you are just looking for an everyday multivitamin or need a little help with your testosterone, they've got a couple of great products that you can take in my description as well. And then also gotspears.com. My guy John has the Heritage the turquoise spear right now you can get for a hundred bucks the six footer great deal also the spear with the torch is fifty dollars off on his website here in september so i appreciate those three businesses for their support we'll give them a little bit more love as next week rolls around as we get back to game week by week we were off a little bit this week uh, but we'll be back on with plenty of content for you next week appreciate you guys as always for tuning in we will talk to you soon go Knowles. <laughs>